Well, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Sergey Panasiuk, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and have a speech. Uh, as you can see, I choose the color of the presentation similar to the color of your conference to be in trend. And I'm a professor at the European University, and today I want to talk about some nuances, legal uh, challenges, and aspects and war reality in Ukraine. Actually, because of uh, such a terrible situation that Ukrainians are in, I mean, a terrible war started by the international aggressor, Russia Federation, the emotional state of Ukrainians may lead to irrational views. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, democracy is the rule of law, but also the rule of people's will, but also the rule of majority. And when the majority is under emotional, economic uh, war pressure, uh, people may choose the wrong way of thinking, misleading themselves that democracy is not so important as strong leader. For now, in my opinion, the Ukrainians had the real uh, risk uh, of um, preferring autocracy instead of democracy because of war. You may say that I'm a pessimist. For real, I want to be wrong, but we could see that uh, the first irrational feedback from the Ukrainian nation Less, was the, uh, less than a month ago. Uh, on August 18th, 2022, following the official opinion poll, 58% uh, of Ukrainians said that the most important thing uh, for Ukraine now is a strong leader. Uh, 79 believe that the president should interfere in activities of the parliament and the government. 62 believe that during the war, even constructive criticism of the authorities is unacceptable. But only 14% of, uh, of responders support the democratic system. What can I say? For sure, on the one hand, we can understand people and their emotional choice. But on the other hand, I'm a professor in constitutional law, so I can't, sorry. And I hope that Ukrainian nation uh, will control emotions and will not turn to autocracy in the future. But the risk uh, is real. Because for now, the common statements are, we don't care about the constitution, we care about the win. And I am crying in this part. <laughs> Actually, uh, some constitutional rights limitations we can see even now. And there is a discussion in our society about current governmental measures, which in my opinion, uh, violate the constitution. Uh, you, may, uh, you maybe know that almost all men uh, from 18 to 60 can't cross a national border to leave Ukraine. And in a few words, the problem is in a violation of the constitutional request that any rights limitation can be only enshrined by law. But in our case, there is no law that bans crossing the border for men uh, during mat uh, martial law. Only the cabinet decree, which is a violation. But also the reason uh, for uh, my afraid is the many people use old Soviet gender views and social standards and agree with such limitation, even if some limitation will be, uh, even uh, some um, limitation is unconstitutional. Uh, you, I will not uh, detail it. You can read it in my uh, article in the International Journal of Constitutional Law blog. Um, I uh, read it, and I, I think that it will be helpful for you to understand these uh, nuances. And at least I want to mention that um, for now, Ukraine has a challenging situation in all spheres. But uh, one of the main challenges is the sovereignty of Ukraine. And we have a huge risk. Uh, to lose sovereignty, uh, actually. And such a risk is about territorial integrity and about Ukrainian future NATO status, which is enshrined in the constitution, but can be challenged if Ukrainian government starts negotiation with aggressor, with Russia, uh, but without a real uh, military win, you know, and so Russia can push on us and try to, uh, to agree some nuances. And in this, in this case, people should be became, uh, became a real constitutional gatekeeper and uh, to control every word and every step in such future agreements and don't rely on a strong leader, only democracy. I have detailed all nuances of possible negotiation with Russia about 
Ukraine sovereignty uh, in uh, Washington Law Review, you can read it and use this link because I need to, uh, to, 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 to limit my presentation. So uh, actually, in my opinion, Ukrainians uh, should not forget about the rule of law and democracy and uh, any economic, political or other situations, even war, can't cancel law, rule of law, and democratic principles of government. Ukrainians know uh, what does mean democracy, yeah? and we have proved it many times. But the current situation uh, pushed people to believe not in law, but in a strong and maybe even autocratic leader, as well as autocratic uh, governmental principles, which seems very sad for me. And once again, Ukrainians should not mislead themselves that a strong leader is better than democracy, as they believe now. Uh, and my speech is not about policy. I don't care actually about any uh, presidents on polit or political um, uh, subjects, political parties. I care about constitution. So this presentation and all my speech was only about the real risk of democracy because you saw uh, such um, percentage. And I want to say a thank you uh, to the organizers of this conference. And if you want, uh, we created the uh, law school. It's like a project. It's not a like a department. And we invite to uh, our colleagues uh, to co in co to future cooperation and events. So I say thank you. I want to say thank you for organizing once more. And I think that we have to cooperate and we have to uh, create more such events. Uh, to discuss uh, uh, real problems because, uh, it, it, as you know, European Commission and European Union ask us uh, to make different changes uh, as, uh, um, for example, as in ju judicial or, uh, or about the uh, different obligations about corruption. So uh, only in uh, deep cooperation between our scholars and uh, European scholars, maybe American scholars, we can uh, change something and maybe in the nearest future be uh, in Europe and be a part of the European Union. Thank you. That would be a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.